Hey guys, welcome back to Amanda's Favorites. Today we're gonna just have a short video showing the difference between the Leuch Charm squared, or that is their graph paper, grid paper, their plane, their dot grid, and their lined. So we're gonna look at all the pages and just, I'm gonna try to show you guys those differences in case you're trying to decide on one of these for yourself. If you follow me, you know I have several videos about Lloyd's Terms. I have ones showing all the metallic editions, gold, copper, and silver, which was done for their 100th anniversary in 2017, because that was her 100th anniversary year. I have Lloyd's Terms that I use for journaling. I have Lloyd's Terms that I use for just notes. I love Lloyd's Terms. This is my first bright color Leuch Germ. So I was pretty excited to get it because I have picked um, all the metallics up until now. And the I have a navy, I love navy. And I have like a khaki colored. That one was actually an accident that I got that one. But anyway, today we're only gonna talk about the page insides. If you want a front to back on what is a Leuch Germ and what all comes with it um, and what makes it up, then I have several of those videos and I will link them down below in my description box. In fact, I should probably make a Leuchtturm playlist. I think I will do that because I don't have that yet. All right, so let's start off with the fact that this was my first Leuchtturm squared. So that's what they call it, squared. It is actually their graph grid paper. And I did not have one of these. So what surprised me about this was that the lines are actually pretty dark. They surprise me, they're darker than I thought. You still have your page number down there, and in case you're not familiar, there is an index in the front of every Leuch term, and I have that in my other review videos. I just wanted to make this one short, though, and showing the differences on the inside pages. So, in this graph grid line, they do leave a margin at the bottom, and they do leave a margin at the top, and they do leave a spot for your date. I actually do not like the date interrupting right up there. They do that on their lined pages and on their squared ones. And I do not like that up there. I wish they would take those off. So let's compare the squared page to the dot grid. Dot grid is a lot lighter than the squares right there. You can tell and see they are a lot lighter. Let's open that and just put these two pages next to each other. There is a big difference. I honestly love how there is no date on the dot grid pages, and I love how they don't leave a margin. Um, so you can either decide whether you need a title up there or not. They do not leave a margin at the top, but they do leave a margin at the bottom right there. There is a margin at the dot grid on the bottom, but you do not have the date interruption on these dot grid pages. And then I'm just gonna get close up so you can see the difference on the dot grid and the squared. Okay, measuring with a ruler, it looks like these are about um, half a centimeter each in their line spacing. So they look like the same line spacing to me. But you can obviously tell there's a huge difference in the way that your page is gonna look with the squared versus the dot grid. The dot grid is obviously the most popular with bullet journalers. I personally have a hard time writing straight on the dot grid because I'm just not a neat writer anyway. So it's hard for me to write straight on there. Let's compare this to the lined. All right, the lined seems to be exactly one centimeter also in its width, which is really weird to me because when I write in the lined, I always feel like I write so much neater and I feel like I have a bigger space there, but I don't think there is. I think I just have a hard time following the dots. Maybe it's just something I need to practice at. But here we go, here's the difference. The lines are not even as dark as the grid lines, to me at least, it doesn't look like it. And the lines are not as dark as the grid lines. So the grid lines is a pretty dark thing on your page and they all look like really light gray to me. They're a grayish hue of lines. And then you can see where the date is at the same place on your lined pages and your squared pages. They have that date written up there. They both have the margin up at the top and have the date. 
and then you have your dot grid pages. So those are your three right there. Let's try to get a close up. I'm not sure if that's going to be good or not at all. But those are your three with lines. Then they also offer a plain book. It is completely plain, their paper. It is really beautiful. It seems like a blank slate you can write anything on. You still get your page number at the very bottom. But other than that, it is just completely blank, plain, beautiful paper, ready to write on. Now, if you want to know anything about the pockets, the ribbons, the paperweight, the index, check out those videos I have down in the description box. Those have full walkthroughs and reviews on the Lloyd Sherm 1917 notebooks. This was just to show you guys because up until now, I did not have a squared one. And so this was um, an addition and I wanted to do a video to show the difference in all four of their choices because I think that's hard to find out there. I haven't seen one. All right, guys, if you have any questions, let me know down in the description box. If you want to share how you use a Lloyd Sherm and which one you prefer, I'd love to hear about that. I don't personally haven't seen anyone using the squared. So I would love to hear what your preference is and if you have used one of these. Thanks for watching, happy planning, and we'll see you next time.